Welcome back to the channel. My name is Douglas and in today's video, I'm gonna be going through recording your keyboard or synthesizer into your computer. So if you're brand new to this, I'm gonna break this down for you, tell you what you need in order to transfer the sound you're getting out of your keyboard and record it into your computer. I'm gonna talk about the gear that I have. Obviously, there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different roads you could go down when it comes to recording your gear into your computer. It's gonna be a lot of personal preference here in terms of equipment to use, what equipment not to use. So take it with a grain of salt. My hope is that even if your setup isn't exactly the same as mine, maybe you're not recording the Nord Stage 3, you're not using a Focusrite and you're not using Pro Tools, that even though you have a different keyboard, audio interface, computer, all of that, that you can follow this and it'll get you 90% of the way there. So my hope is that this can kind of help get the wheels turning, give you some of that information you need if you're looking to record the audio and the sound out of your keyboard into your computer. So let's jump right into it. The first thing I wanna do is talk about gear, what you need in order to actually get started recording. So first of all, you're gonna need a keyboard or a synthesizer or you wouldn't be trying to record it. So in my case, I have the Nord Stage 3. You don't need to have the Nord Stage 3. It could be completely different keyboard. But the main thing I wanted to point out here is that the Nord Stage 3 does not have an audio interface built into it. Now, I do have the Novation Ultra Nova that does have an audio interface built into it, so you can actually send the sounds from the keyboard through to the computer via the USB cable, you're done. It acts as its own audio interface. The Nord Stage 3 and a lot of other keyboards don't have that. So there are some, but they're sprinkled in throughout, and for the most part, you're gonna find that the keyboard or synthesizer you have doesn't have an audio interface or the capability to act as an audio interface with your computer. So what you're stuck with is the need to have something that sits in the middle between your keyboard and your computer. So first of all is the keyboard, that's producing the sound. We're not talking about MIDI capabilities in this video because that's completely different. That's just the data. What we're talking about here is the sounds from the keyboard, what you would send through the outputs, the left and right outputs to your front of house or something like that or what you're listening to in the headphones of your keyboard. We want to record that sound. And to do that, we need something to translate that from the analog sound that you're getting out of the keyboard, convert it to something digital so we can actually capture it in the computer. So what comes into play there is an audio interface or most commonly an audio interface. Some sound cards do have the ability you can do a line in on a sound card. You could potentially make that work but your quality isn't going to be the same as an audio interface. And when it comes to audio interfaces, there's a lot of them out there, USB, Firewire, Thunderport. So go out and find one that's gonna work best with the computer you're using. Maybe you're using a Mac or a Windows and different audio interfaces are gonna work better. What I use and I love, and I've tried a couple of different ones over the years, but I love the Focusrite. So I have the Focusrite Scarlet 8i6. I think it's the third generation and I love it. It works great. They have different versions of the Focusrite Scarlet interfaces. So you could get one that just has two inputs. That'd be fine. You could do left and right. I always recommend doing stereo out of your keyboard. So left and right channels. You want two channels going out of the keyboard, two channels into the audio interface. And then the audio interface is gonna convert that through USB or Firewire or whatever. And that's going to be the audio interface within your computer. So when you have your computer set up, you're gonna pick that audio interface as your sound card and it's going to have the channels that the audio interface has. So in my case, I have four quarter inch on the back, two quarter inch XLR combos on the front. When I pick that as my audio interface, it shows me the different channels that I have in that audio interface, corresponding to the physical channels I have actually on the interface. So that sits in the middle, right? And then the third component is the computer. So the computer houses your DAW, and your DAW is basically a piece of software, could be something free like Audacity, or something free like Waveform. Great DAW that's very capable. I'll include a link in the description below. Or there's some other DAWs out there like Pro Tools, Cubase, Studio One, that you can pay for powerful features within that DAW. So the DAW is gonna allow you to record, it's gonna allow you to manipulate, edit, 
do all of that to your sound and have multiple tracks and, and record your song that way. There are some DAWs that are better for live looping, some DAWs that are better for multi-tracking. What I use is Pro Tools. I love that and it's what I've been using for the last couple of years now. Prior to that, I used Traction, which turned into Waveform. And again, I'll include a link in the description because I think that's a really good DAW for beginners because it's easy to use and it's very powerful and it's free. So they do have a paid version, but the free version, I think it's a couple versions older than the most recent paid one, but it still has a ton of features and the free one now is even more powerful than the one I started with way back when Mackie owned Traction. So that's a great one to get started with. I'm sure I'll get comments too. If you've got a favorite DAW that you use, throw that down so people who are learning and getting into this can try out some different free DAWs. That might be good for them. So a quick recap here is we've got the keyboard, we've got the audio interface, and we've got the computer. Now what I use specifically, again, I mentioned I use the Scarlett 8i6 audio interface. That is a USB audio interface. So that plugs from the audio interface to my computer with a USB cable. And then I go from the Nord Stage 3 out of channels one and two on the back. This would be equivalent to your left and right channels on maybe a non-Nord keyboard out of the channels one and two into the Focusrite interface. Now on the interface itself, I could go into the quarter inch XLR combo front jacks, which have gain knobs, or I could go into the back quarter inch inputs, which have no gain knobs. You may be saying, well, which one is better? And to me, it doesn't matter as long as I'm able to get the gain or the volume level out of the keyboard that I'm looking for. In my case, I can put the Nord Stage 3 on max volume or about 7 eighths volume, depending on the sound I'm playing, plug them into the quarter inch inputs in the back of the Focusrite interface, and I get the levels that I'm looking for in my DAW. Now you may be saying, what are those levels? So my general rule of thumb, and again, there's a lot of different opinions on this, but my general rule of thumb, I want the incoming sound from the keyboard to be between negative 15 and negative 10 dB. Now what this allows me to do is gives me some headroom and it ensures that I'm not clipping on that sound because the worst thing in the world is recording a beautiful take, listening back and realizing that you have some distortion because your volume was too loud coming into the audio interface and it clipped on those inputs. It's called clipping, but that's when the sound is too loud incoming and it distorts. And sometimes you don't hear that until you crank the gain either in a compressor or something like that that's bringing it up even more. So what I like to do is I like to land a little bit lower if you have a clean audio interface, there's no problem in getting that gain up, doing some gain makeup with a compressor or something like that, and bringing the volume up to where you need it for your mix, depending on what you're recording, how many tracks, how many other instruments, what's playing into that overall picture is gonna drive how much you actually wanna bring the keyboard sound into the mix. So again, sometimes I'm fine with that negative 15 to negative 10 range. Uh, sometimes I need it a little louder, but that's my general rule of thumb. Now, you guys that are engineers and producers out there that do this for a living, you may have a completely different take on that. So if you do, throw that in the comments below. I'm curious what you guys think is kind of a, a nice general rule of thumb when it comes to the input gain uh, level. So jumping over to the computer, I just wanted to show you what this looks like from the DAW side. So I use Pro Tools and I have the paid version of Pro Tools here. We can switch between our track view and then mix view, which gives you all of your tracks here. So you can see here that I'm arming two tracks here. I've got my stereo Nord and then audio for the microphone to sync it up. That one, I have the gain on my interface down, but here I've got a stereo and you see I have the left and the right pans. And if I play this, And this right here is my level indicator. So watch as I play. I'm gonna play this softly. Right now we're between negative 25 and negative 20 dB. And if I play harder, it jumps up between negative 15 and negative 10. So again, depending on what I'm playing and what I've got going on in the mix, I may use a compressor to even out those softer parts of the sound. Or use some volume automation, which I won't get into that in this video, but you can actually 
automate some of the effects or volume in your track to adjust the quieter parts to match the louder parts. So anyway, not getting into that too much, but that's my general rule of thumb when it comes to the gain coming out of the keyboard. Now, here's one thing that I kind of, you have to play depending on the difference in the keyboard you're using. So the Nord Stage 3, I can throw at max volume going into my audio interface in the back and I'm fine, I don't have any clipping. But I've had some keyboards where you crank the volume too much on the keyboard and inputting into the audio interface, you get distortion. This will happen a lot with the front inputs where you have the gain knobs. So it's a matter of finding the balance between getting a decent volume out of the keyboard so you're getting the full effect of those sounds, but also not clipping as you're coming into the audio interface. So what I like to do is I like to kind of play with those two. If I'm using, so in my case, I don't use a front, so I don't have gain control over the inputs. I only have volume control over the Nord. If you're going into the front of the audio interface and you have gain control, I would try to have the keyboard somewhere around half to two thirds volume and then adjust my gain knobs down to make sure that I'm not having any clipping on the audio interface signal that's getting sent to the computer. So you can use those gain knobs on the audio interface itself to kind of make up some of that volume if your keyboard is lacking. But in my case, I actually find it better to go into the back inputs where I don't have gain knobs and then I make up the volume within Pro Tools itself. Again, you could use a different DAW, but in my case, I find that works best for me. So hopefully that was helpful in kind of giving you an idea of what you need to get started. You need the keyboard, you need some sort of audio interface. And you may be asking, well, why can't I use a sound card? Why can't I just go into the audio input of my sound card and just off to the races? You could, uh, but a lot of times your dedicated audio interfaces are gonna have less latency, which is the delay between you playing and then hearing the sound back. So as you can see here, almost no latency. There's a tiny bit there if I'm pulling a bunch of tracks at the same time playing and recording, I will get just slight latency sometimes. But for me, um, I don't get a lot of latency with the Focusrite Scarlett. I'll see it more with virtual instruments than I will incoming audio signals, which is great. I wanna get as close to zero latency as possible. So in this case, if you're going into your audio card or your sound card on your computer, that probably will work. You may not have two inputs, you may. Um, I always try to go stereo, so that may not be possible with just a single line input, but at the very core, theoretically you could use that line input, maybe go out of the headphone, convert that to an eighth inch line into your computer. That may work, but you may find that you have latency. So you may play and that sound, you might have a little bit of delay there on that sound between when you play and when you hear back, that can really mess with you when you're playing. So I would recommend a dedicated audio interface. They're really not that expensive and you only need one with a couple of channels in order to record your keyboard. And then from the DAW perspective, again, I'd probably recommend Waveform as an initial DAW if you're just starting out. There's some other free ones out there, but Waveform is the one I'm familiar with. If you wanna go to a paid version, depending on the style of music you play, what you're trying to accomplish, I use Pro Tools, but there's a lot of other DAWs out there. Uh, I won't go into the comparison of DAW versus DAW, uh, but for me, Pro Tools works well, is pretty much bug free in my experience and uh, works really well for what I try to do. And I do multi-tracking. I don't do a lot of looping beat making. Uh, so that's my setup. Nord Stage 3, Focusrite, Scarlet 8i6. Pro Tools, and I use a Dell G7 as my laptop that I run everything on. It's a pretty powerful laptop, and I got it originally for editing video, and it has turned into my music production rig as well. I would probably prefer to have an actual desktop tower here at my studio desk, but for now, the laptop works. I plug it into a big screen, and I'm good to go. It gives me a bit more real estate than rather than working on a laptop. So for me, that's my setup. I hope this video was helpful in giving you an idea on kind of the components you need in order to get started. If you've got any questions, throw those down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching. Stay inspired and keep making that music.